Do you ever have one of those days where all you want to do is read, but the world will not get off your tits? Like, I've got my book, and the world is just there, sucking and sucking and sucking. And I'm like, I'm trying to read. Go away. You've had enough milk. Hey, book buddies. I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. I've got a book haul for you today of uh, books that I'm all really excited to read. Um, some of which are uh, books that I bought myself and uh, which has only made the problem worse that I have too much to read. And uh, then other books which um, publishers have kindly sent me and that look really great and that I'm eager to get to. So, um, I had a day where I was, it was just sort of like a bad day, like things were going wrong at work and, uh, and then I had problems with my house where I had to coordinate with various workmen to try to get um, things fixed and it was just all a like big bother and I was just like, like uh, I can't be asked for this anymore. Uh, so I, to make myself feel better, I went on a bookshop and uh, bought a whole bunch of books, um, which uh, always makes me feel better because it's exciting to get new books. So I'm gonna talk through them and why I picked these particular books. Um, a lot of them came from recommendations. So Meatless Days by Sarah Soleri. Uh, this is about a, a memoir about when Pakistan was newly created as a country and it's a woman writing about uh, women's place in the country and family life. It's a classic memoir that was first published in 1989 and it's been republished by Penguin now who've published this series of books celebrating the centenary of women getting the right to vote in Britain. So um, Penguin have published uh, four books, I think, um, uh, sort of celebrating this. And this new edition of the memoir um, comes with an introduction by Camilla Shamsi. And uh, my friend Anna James, uh, booktuber Anna James, she read this too and loved it and was raving about it. So I thought this is something I should read. So I bought myself a copy of this. Then I finally bought a copy of Min Jin Lee's book Pachinko, uh, which was published last year for the first time. And it's one of those books that I just kept seeing talked about and made me think that like I really want to read this book like sometimes you know you don't know why you're drawn to a book so much and and I just felt like like this is a book I really want to get to I think it's a family saga about a Korean woman in the early 1900s uh, who experiences some sort of family shame and uh, she gets out of it by uh, marrying a Japanese man and moving to Japan and it's a big long book that I just want to like get sunk into. Next is a, another novel uh, which comes from a strong recommendation from uh, the booktuber Camel from What Camel Reads. Uh, he, he did a whole video about um, Polish literature because he is Polish and it's a really great introduction to a lot of literature that I wasn't aware of and one of the novels that he praised really really highly was this novel Stone Upon Stone which I think was first published in 1984, but it was only first translated into English in 2011. Um, so this, this edition is from then. And uh, it's a big, long, epic book, um, I think, about a man uh, living in rural life and just following all different aspects of his life. And the way Camel described it is just so wonderful. Uh, I'll put a link to his video in the description below um, so you can have a look. But he makes it sound so compelling, so this is a novel that I really want to read sometime soon. And then next I have another book which friends of mine who are book bloggers and uh, that I know on Twitter um, have uh, been really been praising. It's this new novel called The Book of Joan by Lydia Yuknavich. And this is uh, sort of being touted as this year's The Power, Naomi Alderman's The Power, uh, because it's a future set novel about a, a woman who is um, supposed to be kind of a reincarnation of Joan of Arc and she's trying to lead society in a different direction. So it's about female empowerment and there's a bit of sci-fi in there, I think. Um, so, so yeah, my, my friend Naomi, who does the great book blog, The Rights of Women, um, writes, spelt uh, W-R-I-T-E-S. And she does some interviews with authors on BookTube. Um, so I'll put a link to her channel below. But yeah, this sounds like a great novel and I was sold, so want to read it. And then next, I have this Irish book called uh, Room Little Darker by June Caldwell. It's published by this great Irish 
Press called New Island Books. And this is a um, book of short stories that was being like really highly praised uh, last year by a lot of Irish authors, but not many other people were talking about it or, or like knew um, or sort of seemed to be aware of it um, outside of Ireland. And, uh, and I really love Irish literature and try to um, keep up with um, new Irish books. So, uh, so yeah, this is a, a book that I've been wanting to get to um, and so finally got myself a copy. And then finally, I have a book called Electric Arches by Eve L. Ewing. And this is a book of, um, it's sort of, it's, it's basically poetry, I think, but, it, but I think it like mixes sort of genre and form. And it was recommended by Denise Smith uh, when I went to see him read last month, um, like I talked about in my, my January reading wrap up. The back describes it as an imaginative exploration of black girlhood and womanhood through poetry, visual art, and narrative prose. Uh, so does that not sound good? It was first published a few months ago, I think, and uh, yeah, I'm eager to get to this, especially because I keep saying that I want to read more poetry. Now onto some books that some publishers have kindly sent me uh, that look really good and that are being published uh, for the first time in February in the UK. Uh, so the, the first one is another uh, big long book that I really want to make time for called The Antipodeans by Greg McGee. My wonderful buddy Matthew uh, asked me what the Antipodeans means, uh, and, but that just means um, people from Australia or New Zealand from that section of the world. And this is a sort of historical novel um, that spans a long period of time where it starts in the um, Second World War um, with two New Zealanders who are uh, taken as prisoners of war and about their dramatic escape, um, which is assisted by some Italians. And so um, and then it like goes forward into the future um, to, to talk about um, the subsequent lives of um, generations in their family. And uh, it, I think it gets at this sort of unexplored area of um, a relationship between New Zealand and Italy um, during the war. And this novel was a huge bestseller in New Zealand, um, so it's finally here in the UK, so uh, very eager to get to this. And then uh, the next novel I want to talk about is called The Break by Caterina Vermente. Uh, this um, novel comes adorned with a quote by Margaret Atwood, no less, who describes it as a look at sort of like girl on girl violence. And it's about a little town um, and where somebody witnesses outside their window a violent event occurring. But then when they go to investigate it, all traces of the skirmish have like disappeared. And so it's, it's about um, several different people in this small town. So it's by a promising new Canadian writer. Uh, that sounds really, really good. And then next, uh, there's this novel called The Blinds by Adam Sternberg. And this is about a group of prisoners who are given new identities and are sent to live in this small community in Texas um, to see if they can be rehabilitated and like start their lives over again. And I think in the community there's a mixture of prisoners and non-prisoners and so it's sort of about the, the tension. It sounds like a really interesting and original premise for a book, so eager to read that. And then I have another book of poetry by Sophie Collins called Who is Mary Sue? And I have a bit of debate about this. this. This is another book of poetry that sort of, I think, straddles sort of genre and form, but it's described as like verse and prose collages. And I, I feel a bit like torn about this because it sounds really interesting in a way um, where it takes as its premise um, this figure of Mary Sue, um, who is sort of like an archetype in literature of womanhood. And the book is meant to explore uh, the, the idea that uh, men invent things and women merely reflect on things. But then at the beginning, she's describing how she got her part of her inspiration for this by, by reading this, this novel, uh, which she describes and which um, to me uh, was immediately obvious that she was describing Rachel Cusk's novel, Outline. And that's a novel that like, I really enjoyed the concept of that novel, 
but um, it's it's one of those books that I didn't really feel emotionally engaged with. And so like, I felt like I was always battling with people when it when it came out like saying like, oh really, was it any good? And so now like immediately that set up this conflict for me that like, if that's a big inspiration for this book, like is this a book that I'll enjoy? So I think that's a really tricky thing for an author to do, to set themselves up and say they were inspired by this great book because if you didn't happen to like that book, then you might not like this book. But like I said, I really did like the ideas in Outline. And so if she can take those ideas and explore them in a really creative way um, that I also find emotionally engaging, then I think this is a book I will like. So I'm eager to give it a try at least. And then I have a novel called Consent by Leo Benedictus. And you, you can't really read the, the title or the author name because it, it's in white um, against this white background and sort of disappears. Uh, but there it is on the, the spine. And this is a bit of a thriller about a uh, man who stalks multiple women. And it's told from the perspective of these women, which sounds really creepy and tense, so I think this might be a good thriller. Then I have a novel called The Adulterants by Joe Dunthorne. And Joe Dunthorne is a novelist that I've never read before. He's a respected British novelist, but I've never read any of his work before, although he wrote this novel called Submarine, um, which was made into a great film, and I really liked the film. Uh, but this is a novel sort of about a sort of modern um, every man who he's described as not really cheating on his wife. Um, so I think it's it's sort of about this like tension where um, he sees himself as like a good person, um, but really his like actions um, say something different. And it has this really lovely cover um, where there's sort of dots cut out um, with the uh, yellow background showing through. And this is a quite short novel um, that's also been praised by the writer Taya Obrecht. So this is one that I hope to get to in the next few weeks. And then there's a novel called uh, The Last of the Greenwoods by Claire Morell. And I'd read uh, Claire Morell's debut novel called Astonishing Splashes of Color, which came out several years ago. Um, I think it was like 2013 or something like that. And this novel is about two uh, elderly men who live in isolation out in the countryside and they get a letter from a woman who claims to be their long lost sister that they haven't seen in like 50 years or something. So that sounds like a really intriguing premise and Claire Morell's uh, writing is really beautiful um, so I'll be eager to read this. And then finally, I have a memoir called Educated by Tara Westover and this author sounds like she had amazing and fascinating life because she grew up in a survivalist family who completely uh, isolated her and uh, didn't even like register her birth and it's about her process growing up in this intense isolation and then being introduced to the world and um, going to get an education and so with that like background I think that must give someone a really fascinating perspective on society. So this memoir sounds so, so good, as do all of these other books, and so I just need to find time to read them and tell the world to leave me alone uh, so I can just do some good reading. But I hope you're finding time to read, and I hope you're doing well. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books, if you'd particularly recommend any of them, or uh, which of these books you're particularly interested in reading. So I'll speak to you again soon. Take care, book buddies. My camera won't stop recording. Stop!